In this video, our task is to construct a matrix. We mentioned in the last video that our solution to the differential equation is going to be determined in terms of temperatures defined at discrete positions of x. We use a step size h and say that each x with an index i is going to correspond to n times h so that x goes from x0 equals 0 to x sub n equals L, corresponding to the inlet and the outlet of the heat exchanger. We now have finite difference approximations for each differential equation in our system of differential equations. So as long as we can evaluate these equations at each of our x positions, or at least the appropriate number and set of x positions, then we can actually come up with a system of equations. In this case, it's a linear system. So this is going to be a matrix problem. Um, so let's start by listing our unknowns. So we have temperatures 1 and 2 ranging from i equals 0 to i equals n that actually corresponds to n plus 1 positions because we're including 0 and therefore 2n plus 2 temperatures. Of those 2n plus 2 temperatures, two are known quantities, so we actually have 2n unknowns, and so we need to get 2n equations. At each position of x, we can evaluate two equations. So two equations per position, if we want 2n unknowns, then we have to actually evaluate at n positions. Now, those positions are going to be, so we're going to evaluate for x equals x0 through x of n minus 1. The reason I decided to stop at n minus 1 is because these equations involve t1 and t2 of i plus 1, so that will get us equations in terms of t n or t1 n and t2 n. And notice that this is actually n positions, so this will get us the right number of unknowns. Another thing I want to clarify is that these are actually going to be the temperatures evaluated at the specific discrete positions, x sub i, so I'm going to give them indices. And let's list our unknowns. Um, so if we start looking at position x0, then we do not know t1, 0. We do know t2, 0. So it actually does not belong in this list. t2, 0 is 80 degrees. So we can go on to list t1 of i, t2 i, and then um, t1 n, t2 n. But again, t1 n is a known quantity. So I'm actually going to take that off of the list. So I need to come up with equations that correspond to this list of unknowns. And I would point out that it's actually sort of arbitrary how I actually order my list of unknowns. For example, instead of listing them the way I did, I could have listed all the unknown T1 values, T10 through T1 n minus 1, and all and then subsequently list all the unknown t2 values t2 1 through t2n that would be perfectly valid but this is how i'm doing it this time because i find that more intuitive i'm also going to take these equations and write them in a form that's a little easier to follow so i'm going to say for for arbitrary i i'm going to say that the equation on the right, this equation, is going to look like something times t1 
i uh, plus something t2 i and plus something times t1 i plus 1 equals 0. So in other words, I'm just going to calculate the coefficients um, in the parentheses because they're going to be the actual matrix element, so it helps to collect terms. Now, when I do collect terms, what I'm going to get is um, alpha 1 H plus 1 times T1 I, and then negative alpha 1 H times T2 I, and then negative 1 times T1 I plus 1. And if I then do the same thing, For the next equation, in other words, for this equation, we're actually going to have a t2i plus 1 here equals 0. And it looks very similar. So this uh, t1 of i coefficient is alpha 2h, uh, 1 minus alpha 2h, and then negative 1. Um, you know, one thing I, I do feel like doing, just for the sake of clarity, is I'm actually going to include some things that are actually equal to zero. So I'm gonna make a little room. I'm gonna move this here. I'm gonna say plus zero t two i plus one. It's actually not in the equation, but uh, You'll see a little later why I think this will be helpful. Okay, so when I evaluate these equations, I'm going to evaluate There's a couple of important things that I like to keep track of when I solve these problems. The first one is what are my known quantities and what are my unknown quantities? And the second one is where is the diagonal in my matrix problem? Okay, so um, let's, let's tackle that by first calculating for i equals 0. Um, what I'm going to get is alpha 1 h plus 1 t1 0 plus negative alpha 1 h t 2 0 plus negative 1 t 1 1 plus 0 t 2 1 equals 0. So this quantity t 2 0 is actually not in the list, right? It's because we know this value. Um, so I'm actually going to color code this green. So this is actually a constant, right? Because T20 is 80 degrees. Alpha 1 is a known constant. H is the step size I choose. So this should actually go on the other side of the equation. Let's actually do that. Right, so that equation ends up with a constant. This will go into my B matrix. So writing out this equation for I equals 0 is going to give me alpha 2H T1 0 plus 1 minus alpha 2H T2 0 plus... 0 t 1 1 plus minus 1 t 2 1 equals 0 and again we have another term that is proportional to t 2 0 so this I'm going to make it green and I'm going to move it to the other side so this I'm going to I'm 
got to add a negative sign. I'm going to make that zero. Okay. And looks like I can make room for it. Okay. So you can see that in the first two rows, we we have to move two terms to the other side because they're actually known quantities. Now, the other thing I like to do is keep track of what the diagonal terms is. So if this is row one in my matrix or corresponds to row one, the first variable is T10. So I'm going to color code this term red because it's going to correspond to um, the diagonal element. And the next unknown is T11. Remember T21 is or T20 is known. So we're going to have a zero. So when we code the script to solve this problem, it's really handy to know where the pattern of the diagonal elements are in the matrix. Okay, so let's move forward to i equals 1. Um, so because i equals 1 is not really at any boundary, there really aren't any known quantities here. Um, I'm going to be a little sloppy and just make these look like ones so I don't have to erase the eyes. I probably should erase those. This is two. Okay. But it's still handy to know where the diagonal is. Okay, so this is looking at rows three and four. So the third and the fourth numbers... Um, are going to be third and fourth unknowns are going to be T21 and um, T12. So if I, if I write out the unknowns in order, I'm going to have T10, T11, T two, one, T, two, two, right? So if we're looking at the third and the fourth rows, the coefficients of the third and the fourth variables are going to be my diagonal elements. So that's going to be this. And then the T2, whoops, this should say 2. Okay, so the T2, wait a second. Uh, Sorry, this should not be T22, this should be T12. So this should be the diagonal. Okay, so you have to think about this one for a little bit, but the pattern of where the diagonal is for any arbitrary row i is actually going to be the same as what it is for i equals 1 until we get to the last row. So um, because this was the diagonal above, it should be the diagonal for any subsequent row except for the end. And likewise, that should be the diagonal. So when we fill in the matrix, um, It'll help to keep track of things. Okay, so now this is actually true for i greater than 0, but less than n minus 1. 
So in fact, this is redundant, but it did help us understand the pattern. At least it helped me understand the pattern. So if you look at the last two rows, This would correspond to i equals n minus 1. And it would also correspond to t, what are the last two variables? Um, uh, uh, t2 n minus 1 and t2 n. Okay, so the last two rows, are going to, so now i is n minus 1, and n okay we have to recognize a couple of things one of them is the t1n is known so this right so this is actually known quantity, I guess we can make this green too. And actually, so is this, but it's multiplied by zero, so that's less interesting. Um, so I'm just gonna cross that out. Um, but this one, I'm going to actually move the negative sign. Okay, so that's what the last two rows will look like. And what I did, this is probably beyond my ability to draw in real time. So I'm just going to go back to my notes, as I often do in lecture, and show you. I didn't sort them right. Lecture 9J. If we go all the way down, I took the time to draw this matrix out in detail, right? So now each of these tells us the corresponding variable that would be from this list. For each of these coefficients, you can see all the red coefficients define the diagonal, and these define which values of the index i were used to define each equation. Finally, these green known quantities go into the other side of the equation. So the next video we are actually going to go through the reasoning required to code that script, which would then solve 